Alright, so today I'm going to be tying a little terrestrial pattern, and this is a chubby Chernobyl tied in hopper colors, and generally this is tied in a purple or black color scheme for trout, and I have actually had some trout strike at this when I was trout fishing, which I don't get to do very often, so I wasn't there long, but I did get some decent strikes. So yeah, let's get tying. The materials to this fly are, I use, um, uh, I use brown thread for the thread on this fly, and this is 3 aught, so it's not that large. And then yellow foam, barred yellow rubber legs, um, EP fibers for the wing, yellow dubbing for the body. And then if we can flip this over real quick, you can probably see that right here, there's just a little bit of crystal flash to provide... A bit of a tag and like a hot spot type thing for bluegill that see this pattern. I primarily tie this pattern for bluegill and bass, which is why I use the hopper colors. However, there's plenty of different species you can tie this pattern for. For this fly, I begin the thread base around the midpoint of the hook. And I want to trim it off early because I don't have much space to go down through with this one. And I do want to double up on this just a little, because I'm going to be applying the foam. And you always want your foam to have a nice and strong thread base to sit on. And now I'm taking this crystal flash, and this is like a pearl blue color. So I'm going to select probably about 12 or so strands. And I'm going to trim them squared. And see here, they're trimmed to square, or close to squared. So, just want to lay these down. And they're a bit longer than they're going to be once they're all tied down and trimmed. So don't really bother with getting the length right just yet on them. And I trim them at a slight angle so I can build a little thread ramp so that it's not just sliding around everywhere. And now I'm gonna trim these to just a little bit of a tag end. We don't want too much hanging off of there. That's about where I want them. So now I'm gonna start the work with the foam. And I use this yellow craft foam. I don't actually know how thick this is. I believe it's about two millimeter. But you can really use your choice of foam to tie any variations of this fly. It just depends on the profile you want. But I'm just getting this nice and thin profile because for the bluegill, the legs are a bigger attractor than the fact that it's floating. So I don't really bother being too much of a perfectionist with the foam. However, how you handle it is up to you. I want to cut just a little, nice little triangle into the foam, like this, just to provide the rear of the body. And I want this to be about as long as that crystal flash tag, maybe just a bit shorter. And I want to take tight wraps down on that to secure it, since you want foam to be really secured to the hook. Now I'm going to start my work with the EP fibers, and there's a bunch of stuff you can use. Really any variety of poly yarn, or even wool, but I find I prefer EP fibers and other synthetic materials, because they have that more synthetic look that you go for on this fly, if you know what I'm getting at. Like, it's hard to describe, they almost look rougher than natural fibers and I just want to trim a little bit of EP fibers to use for a bunch of flies because I can just set off the bunch to the side so I've just trimmed down this and this should probably be enough for three or four flies and I don't want the back wing to be too too long 
I want the front wing to be the longer wing set. So again, I tie this down really tightly, and then I want to trim it squared. And like I said, I don't want this back wing to be very long. So I trim it to be about as long as that crystal flash tag. Now I'm going to take these yellow and black barred rubber legs. And you can see here, this is what they look like. But you can obviously switch up the color depending on what you're trying to imitate with this. If you're trying to imitate an ant, you might want to go with just a straight black or a black and gray barred. But it's really up to you and what you're trying to imitate. I tie these in and then I turn it to the side so that I can measure up the other leg and trim them to be about equal. And then I do the same on the other side. I just want to tie that all down. You see the back leg's about where I want it. So I just want to trim the front leg to be about there, maybe a little shorter. But yeah, that's all there is to tying in the legs. And I recommend not tying in the legs one side at a time, but rather doing what I did and tying it in at the midpoint. Because I find that the legs are secured much more strongly when I do that, and it's just easier to get two done at once. Now I take my yellow dubbing, and I want to just, like I said, cover up that thread area where I tied all of that in. And I'm going to set aside a large little clump that should last for around the rest of the fly. And I just want to keep on moving up. And I want a fairly dense dubbing noodle, nothing really thick or anything, just enough <coughs> to move up in touching turns. And I just want to continue this process until I'm around right here so that I can give the fly just that little bit of a back that you see on it. Just like that. And now I'm going to be tying in the front wing pair and the front pair of rubber legs. So all in all, this fly has eight legs. So it's a very leggy pattern, um, if that's a good way to put it. But the legs are a huge attractor for bass and panfish when it's on the surface. So that's good. That's why you'll often see rubber legs mixed in with streamers because they just have a really unique range of motion in the water. And on top water, they give a really good profile to the fly when it's viewed from under. And this wing, I probably don't want to trim. I might trim it a little just to square it out a little more. But that's about where I want it. So, you don't have to do as much work to the front wing as you did to the back wing. And now I'm going to do some more work with the rubber legs. So generally, when I tie this in, I want this leg to extend just a bit past the front leg on the back side. If it was to go straight down, which it obviously doesn't it's not just a straight line it points out from the fly a little and that's a good thing but that's just a round where I want it generally speaking for the profile of this fly and for the proportions now I want to tie just my second pair of legs for this side and this one is actually a bit long so I'm going to give this side just a quick trim and then trim this one and now I'm ready to apply the dubbing. You can see here if I rotate my vise so that you can view it from the side. The fly is finally starting to take form. And I actually don't believe I'm going to trim that front wing. That's around where I want it exactly. So I'm just going to begin applying dubbing.
I like to apply just a little bit of dubbing down here to the bottom. However, I don't tie in the head here. I just simply trim that. So that also allows it to have a bit of a, um, a popping or gurgling motion if you strip it in the water, which makes it a really good top water fly. Like I said, for bass and panfish, especially when tied in this color, because, um, They'll go for it because it works as a hopper imitation, but also because you can pop it around and probably even tie this in a frog color and not do terribly. Alright, so I've applied a bit of dubbing down there, but I have kept the hook eye open. That's one thing that's important when you do work close to the hook eye. You do not want to do a thread wrap over it because even a single thread wrap over the hook eye will completely ruin your fly so try to avoid that at all times now i'm going to whip finish and just get under there at an angle but continue to make sure that the hook eye stays open it slipped off a little there so i'm gonna have to redo that one you see there i've kept the hook eye open now I've whipped finished, and the fly is now complete and ready to be fished. And I am going to give you a quick view of what this looks like from all viewpoints. This is about what it'll look like from the bottom. The lighting there is really crappy, sorry about that. But you can see here, it has a really nice profile in general. So this is just... A great fly for especially spring and summer fishing. And I actually modeled these colors off of a hopper that I found in this little meadow when I was hiking. Um, and it was right by a creek, so I imagine the fish are eating a fair amount of them. And yeah, that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support the channel. And yeah, check out maybe check out some of my other videos if you enjoy this type of thing, and I haven't been uploading that much lately, but I am about to get back to it, so yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching.